Thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Moishe and Rabbi Tandina, for hosting all of us. And uh, where's Rabbi Tandina? You mentioned that they don't usually let people off the street speak, but I speak every Shabbos at my shul, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're a much more tolerant shul. Um, I've got our president of our shul and the cousin of our shul who have come to watch me. They're used to falling asleep, in, uh, so get comfortable, guys. Been amazing messages till now, and thank you to all the, the previous speakers. I was thinking, you know, the topic, or at least the fly, Moshe was very specific on, on exactly what we should talk about. <laughs> um, but the, the fly said, you know, critical messages leading up to the high holidays. So uh, there's so much you can talk about. But I try to sort of, when I talk, I try to sort of pick up what's happening in, you know, around town or around, you know, even just my simple congregation. And I remember it was this, this Sunday morning, you know, one of the, one of the Gaboyim sort of walked up to a group of us at the end of davening and said, you guys forgive me for everything I've done this year? And everyone was like, yeah, and do you forgive me? And they started that whole, you know, that whole cycle that happens in the lead up to, to Rosh Hashanah Kippur where it's like this mass produced forgiveness and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, forgive you, do you forgive me, do you forgive me, do you forgive me? And then the emails go around, do you forgive me? Yeah, do you forgive me? And it's like a whole cycle and everybody's quite happy about it and you move on. The problem with that is that the people that you're saying yes to or you're accepting the forgiveness are people that haven't done anything wrong to you, right? It's, it's your friends and it's people you haven't seen the whole year probably and it's not, very, it's not very difficult to actually accept their forgiveness or to give forgiveness and to ask for forgiveness because, as I said, you've had no real difficult interpersonal relationship that may have been strained. So I'd like to sort of reflect on three, three items or three ingredients or three you know, components in regards to if you need to ask forgiveness from somebody. You know, of course, we spend a lot of time over, this, over the, the next few weeks praying and davening. It's very much about our relationship with Hashem. But we, we forget often that it's actually equally important to work on your interpersonal relationships. And that's the very close relationships, of course, because those are often the most strained or could become the most strained. With our spouse, with our children... Our business, our business colleagues, friends, and perhaps people that we may have, you know, come into contact that may have, you know, angered us, frustrated us, hurt us. So I want to look at three things that you need to do in order to truly, you know, ask for proper forgiveness, and and then look at the other side of it. If somebody's asked you for forgiveness, somebody's hurt you, do you need to actually forgive them? You know, I'm sure we've all heard, or probably may have heard at some at some level that. If somebody asks you three times, or if you ask somebody for three times and they don't give it to you, then you, 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 you can rub your hands. He say, I asked three times. So then you see, as I said earlier, you know, do you forgive me? No, do you forgive me? No, do you, okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you know, Rosh Hashanah, keep it solved. All's, all's well. So let's first look at the, the first three. And the reason why this, I actually spoke something similar to this on Friday night, because there's a, there's a strong connection between the, the story of the Egla Rufa, which we spoke about this past Shabbos, where they found a dead body lying in the middle of the field and they don't know what happened to this person, there's no witnesses, no one knows what, what occurred. So they measure to the nearest city and that, the closest city has to do a whole process of, they say certain uh, prayers or words and they have to offer a sacrifice and so on. But there are a lot of connections as to the details of that in terms of how do you truly ask somebody for forgiveness. So the first ingredient um, is actually relates to a, an article I saw in the New York, New York Times years ago, this was more to do with the relationships between husband and wife. And the, the, the author was writing about how she noticed she was saying these particular sentences to her husband over and over again and he was getting more and more frustrated. She was saying, I love you darling but you didn't take out the rubbish. Or, I love you but you know, the, kids, the kids are misbehaving and you should. And she noticed that he, was never, he wasn't listening. The message wasn't getting through. And one day she stopped him and she said, why are you not actually you know, listening to what I'm saying? And he said, you're saying the one word which is ruining what you're trying to tell me. And you're saying the word, I love you, but. And it's that but that makes me only hear the next part of the sentence, which is, you don't like that I'm not taking out the rubbish. And if I took out the rubbish, then maybe you would love me. But you don't really love me. And I thought this is exactly consistent with forgiveness. You know, so many people come and say, I'm sorry I hurt you, but da da da. The person you're asking for forgiveness, the minute they hear you put in that word but, they realize that you're not actually sorry for what you did. Because you're qualifying it. You're giving it you know, limitations. So I think if there's anybody that you need to apologize to this coming you know, Rosh Hashanah Kippur, be very, very careful with the wording you choose. If you're going to put a but in there, you might as well not even try or attempt to ask for forgiveness. I remember, I don't want to bring up you know, you know, sore wounds for many of us, but I, mean, I remember at the time 
and Moshe and I were talking, we were on the rabbinical council when we were doing the child sexual abuse scandal and other times, you know, when we spoke to victims, we spoke to them, they said, you know, often people would apologize, but it would come with the but, it would come with, we're sorry, but, da, 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 da. And I think the first thing we need to make sure is get rid of that and truly apologize. The second thing that has to happen, and it's, it's something which I'm sure we were all told when we were children, don't do it again. You know, you know you, people say, I'm sorry, but a minute later, they're doing the exact same thing. So if you're going to apologize, I think you have to really commit to yourself that you're not going to repeat the thing that you've done that's actually caused you to ask for forgiveness. And, you know, one of the reasons why the, the sacrifice that had to be brought um, was one which had no yoke put on it ever before. It was almost like a, a clean slate in terms of this egg la rufa. Because it was almost demonstrating that if it's going to be a cow or an ox that has already worked through it, it's almost like we don't want that same old, that same old cow behaving the way it does. We want a new person, we want a new identity. So if you're going to ask for forgiveness, remember, number one, don't say but. And number two, make sure that you commit to not doing the same thing over and over again. Because then it's almost like a meaningless thing. Like we said, we tell children, are you really sorry? If you're sorry, you wouldn't do it again. So you're obviously not sorry because you just did it again. Adults do the same thing, obviously, in, in different contexts and in different, you know, there's much more serious things at, at stake. How do you achieve those two? It, it brings us to the third level, which is really, you have to be vulnerable. You know, one of the most difficult things to do to ask for forgiveness from someone is that it causes you to open up yourself. If you're not prepared to open yourself up, if you're not prepared to, and you were speaking about the ego, and sometimes... If you're not vulnerable, then you won't really be able to apologize to somebody else. I know there's uh, you know, some people in this room that I've spoken to about it. You don't see someone for a while and you keep, you keep apologizing. If you're, really, if you're not vulnerable about it, then the person will sense that. The person will sense that you're not being honest, you're not being sincere. If you've ever been on the, on the receiving end where somebody has come to apologize to you, and maybe we can all relate to some story where it's happened, you can tell whether the person is genuinely sorry. And if they are genuinely sorry, then I can guarantee you that they've, been, they've allowed themselves to be vulnerable. If not, if they're just saying, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, the person who's receiving it will know that it's not genuine and probably won't, won't, won't you know, provide the, the forgiveness. So that's on that, spread, that side of the things. If, number one, as I said, don't, don't qualify your apology. Make sure that you're really not going to do it again. And three, if you really want it to be meaningful, dig deep and see, learn about yourself before you go and apologize. On the other side of things, I was asked a question recently, do you have to accept, if somebody's hurt you, you know, and, and it could be on a, you know, it's a huge spectrum, you know, it could be somebody who's just, was rude to you at a kiddish, or somebody who's genuinely done something quite horrific to you, do you have to forgive them? And as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, that, that three things, that three request thing, is that real, is it not real? So I came across something quite fascinating, and that is, there's actually three levels, if you like, of forgiving somebody. The first two, I believe, are genuinely a responsibility we have. It may not be easy to do, but it's the third one is, I guess, going for gold. Hopefully we can get to that third level of forgiveness. The first one, and you might think this is, I'm not saying a joke, but you might think this is crazy, but the truth is if you have been hurt by somebody, you could probably relate to this. The first step of forgiveness is to stop wishing bad on the other person. If somebody comes to you, if somebody's done wrong to you, the lowest level of forgiveness is to not pray that they should be killed or pray that they should be hurt or pray that the bad should happen to them. And you'll be surprised, you might, well, you might not be surprised that when somebody has done something wrong to you, it's, very, it's almost like a human emotion that you wish bad on the other person. So if somebody does genuinely come ask for your forgiveness, I think you've got to, you've got to at least offer number one. Number two is, and this is more, I think, more beneficial for the person who's going to provide the forgiveness is to make sure or to at least try to stop being angry at the other person. You know, so many people walk around, I just, I've had over the last few weeks, interesting, yeah, I guess maybe in the lead up to Rosh Hashanah, people are reflecting on this. I've had people come to my office, just the other day there was, you know, this, this, these two family sisters came with their, sp their spouses and they haven't spoken to each other for like 20 years. Someone died and now, that, like it genuinely, it generally happens, you know, there's a death and they all want to Try and, try and resolve things. But it was amazing to, to witness this concept. They both were, were living their lives with such anger. Every time there was a family simch, every time they were in a room together, they wouldn't look at each other. And there was so much baggage they were carrying around. 
that the second step of, of, of providing forgiveness to somebody is actually really more for you than for the other person. To let go of the anger and say, you know what, I'm prepared to forgive you, it's very cathartic and very, I guess, therapeutic in a sense to be able to do that. So number one is stop wishing bad on them. Number two is to, to get rid of the anger. The third one, as I said, is not always possible, in my opinion. And that is to actually try and restore the relationship. There are certain circumstances where if somebody came to ask me advice on certain things, I would tell them, this person has done such bad to you, and this person has hurt you in such a bad way that I, I don't want you to restore the relationship with them. So a lot of people think that if, unless they're restoring the relationship, they haven't, they haven't fulfilled the mitzvah of offering forgiveness. Number one and two, I would say, you probably need to be able to do. Number three, you don't have to do. If you can, if the situation allows it, then, then as I said, that's, that's obviously the greatest thing you can do, is perhaps try and restore that relationship. But if it's not possible, for whatever the circumstances are, try and at least cover two. So, as we lead into this time, as we're going to Rosh Hashanah Kippur, and as I said, it's a time where we spend a lot of time in shul, but we should equally think about all the relationships in our lives. If you happen to be the person asking for forgiveness, Hopefully you can take those three things on board. And if you are the person whose people are coming to ask for your forgiveness, try and at least push yourself for the first two because I think, I think it will be very helpful in your own life. And if you can, if you can achieve the third one, then even better. Wishing, or hopefully we don't have any interpersonal problems, but if we do, I hope this helps in some way. Thank you.